UCF Art Gallery. I'm Shannon Lindsay, the UCF Art Gallery Director, and we are here at the Flying Horse Editions Exhibition to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Flying Horse Editions. And I want to welcome Theo Lotz, who is the Director of Flying Horse Editions. So thank you so much for being here and for um, sharing this work with us to showcase in the gallery. Can you tell us a little bit about Flying Horse Editions and what a fine art printing studio is? Yeah, absolutely. First, let me thank you for hosting this beautiful exhibition. It's really wonderful to see everything out of our studio and see it in a different context. And it's, uh, it's really rewarding for all of us. So Flying Horse is a collaborative studio, meaning um, artists come and do a, sh a residency with us for a period of time and they work with our master technicians. And we have a staff of highly trained printers that are able to help the, the artists push their practice in a way that they might not be able to do it in their own studio. And so what types of artists do you typically invite to come to Flying Horse? We're open to any kind of, of artist. Uh, we've worked with performance artists, photographers, sculptors. So it's really sort of what kind of um, what kind of curiosity and what kind of what kind of sense of spirit of adventure do these artists have that's more appealing, more more of the question for us. Sure, right, like what are the opportunities you have to work together? Right? Yeah. Right. And so how long does an artist usually stay during their visit in collaboration with Flying Horse? Well, it depends. Um, typically it's a week to 10 days. Um, often it just depends on how available the artist is, right? So sometimes we might have somebody come down for a very long weekend um, just to get the ball rolling and then they go away and then we work and do do what we can without them and then have them come back for another three or four days so that happens often nice and this is really exciting because it's the 30th anniversary and there's been a lot of changes to flying horse based in facilities and location so right. it actually started here when we used to be the art department or department of art and then now it's transitioned to downtown. So yeah, so I'm the fourth director of Flying Horse. Professor Rivers was the first director, and then Key Francis came from uh, Mississippi to run it for a, a number of years. And then Ryan Burkhart, who was uh, on faculty here, ran it. And then I got so lucky to take it over. And in that time, we've had four studios. Okay. The first one was in the art department print shop. And then we moved into a studio uh, in the Research Parkway where the graduate student studios are now. Okay. And then we moved downtown. When I took over, we moved downtown. And, and the, what was once called the Expo Center, we were there for 12 years, I think. And now we're in a, another location very close to that in the, on the downtown campus um, on Amelia Street. And it's a beautiful facility, which Thank is you. really yeah, exciting. Yeah. And you've been there like two years now? We've been there for two years. We moved in right before the pandemic. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we haven't really put the space through its full paces yet. Right. right. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great studio, uh, 7,000 square feet, um, really state of the art. We have all the major traditional processes in full. So we can do etching, lithography, relief, um, letterpress, screen print. Nice, great. Yeah. Well, I definitely don't want to task you with what is the next 30 years going to look like, <laughs> but maybe moving. <laughs> I won't be here. Huh? <laughs> maybe moving forward, are there any ideas that you have or things that you would like to see Flying Horse do that maybe haven't ha been able to do yet, or, or new processes or new materials? You know, we're always pushing the boundaries of what printmaking is, and I think we'll we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about some of the pieces. But you know, for me and for I think the rest of the staff, it's really about what the artist is interested in doing and trying to help them do something they've never done before, help them clarify some of their ideas about their own work, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know through a different kinds of lens. 
So this is an etching by Tony Ethrong. Um, and this is actually the very first print that was done at what would become Flying Horse Editions. Um, at the time, it was called Flying Horse Press. Professor Rivers worked with uh, Tony Ethrong to make this etching on a large sheet, sheet of copper. And so the process, the etching process is um, the printmaker gives the artist a big sheet of flat copper that has ground on it. It's like a kind of a tar-based material. And the artist draws through it with a sharp needle, exposing that copper below. And then the printmaker puts that in acid. And where that drawing has been exposed, the acid corrodes it out, right, leaving a groove. You take off that tar-like ground, and then you rub ink into those etched lines, polish the surface of it, put it on a press, paper down, and you run it through the press. And that drawing is transferred to the paper. Um, but this process is really wonderful for, for um, artists that are interested in a line quality, right? So you can see in this print, there's really all the, all the value is built up by cross-hatching. And depending on how it's inked, that will look a little bit different every time you run it through the press, right? Correct, but our job as printers is to make sure that every time it runs through the press, it's exactly the same. That's what, it, that's what makes it an addition, right? So, uh, the, you know, the value of printmaking is that an artist can think about the image once, work out the image, and then print it multiple times um, and have this, the exact same replicate. Um, so yeah, so it's very important that it looks exactly the same. Print number one should match exactly print number 12. Which is where the mastery comes in, <laughs> definitely. Well, we're really excited to have this piece, the very first flying horse piece in the exhibition. These prints are a wood, all variations of a woodcut process. So, you know, the traditional woodcut is artist has a plank of wood, flat wood, and carves the image away, and whatever remains, the printmaker rolls ink over that raised surface, right? The ink is on that, and there's no ink where it's carved away. The paper goes down, it goes through the press, and the image is is re remains. So these are both woodcuts by two different artists. This is James Sienna, and this is Glenn Baldridge. So in this print by James Sienna, he was interested in making a woodcut, but he didn't want to do this kind of carving process. So what he wanted to do is build something with lumber, right? This was kind of a carpentry project for on our side. He made a drawing and we built the structure w using bits of wood, and, uh, and so that's, that's that print. James is known for uh, making work that is kind of process-oriented. Um, he thinks of a, he calls it an algorithm, he thinks of a, 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 a sort of a process idea and follows that through. So he doesn't think of an image first, he thinks about what's the process, the action of making this image gonna be. So in this drawing, it was about these interlocking designs. Um, and so when he made it, the first sort of idea drawing that he made was that there were just these perpendicular marks. Um, you know, so the first one went this way, and then he contradicted that motion with one that went vertically, and then these ones that go sideways. So after we made this print, which was a very complicated print, even though it's a very simple design, it was very complicated. Um, but we had this conversation, and you know, it's apparent that everybody kind of knows that's the way James's work is built, so sort of on this idea, this algorithm. Um, but they don't really see that process, right? They always see the thing that he doesn't think about, which is the final project. So we had this idea of making this book. We wanted to break each one of those kind of movements that he makes to do his drawings down into its each you know, component part. So page one was the first mark, and then page two was the second mark, mm -hmm. and page three, and then we get the red element. And so 
this book just sort of builds on it the way that he was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And then we had, James had this brilliant idea of <laughs> numbering each one of them, which on a technical side for us was really <laughs> complicated <laughs> to get all the numbers to land exactly in the center of those, those holes. So kudos to Larry Cooper for getting that right. And because this was a accordion style book, on the back we could reverse the order, right? So on that one we just looked at this horizontal was black, and now it's red here. So this is a suite of multi-process prints that we did with Kelly Raston. So we call it a progressive suite, right? So it's, there are three, three um, states for each print. The first one is the photo reviewer, which is the first um, photo mechanical reproductive process. Mm -hmm. So in the very first books that photographs were printed in and not tipped in, right? Tipped in is when they would actually print the photograph and then glue it to the page. Right. The next iteration of printing uh, photographs and books was photogravure, which is actually a etching process. So these are, these are photogravures. And then uh, the master printer on this was um, Adrian Gonzalez. And the, set, the next step, the color, is the uh, aquatint, uh, mm -hmm. which is a way to make tone mm -hmm. with etching. And then the last step is a screen print with these dots on top. And the reason we did it this way is because at each state, the artist was, was super excited about it and was like, that's it. And we say, what, are, what if we tried this one thing? And <laughs> right. we do it and she was like, that's it, that's great. And then we would do the next thing and it was great. So she could have completed the print at any one of those states. So this is a print by Louis Gispert. And Lewis's work really is inspired by hip hop culture, right? Street culture. Um, and so this is also a, a laser cut wood cut, mm -hmm. right? So um, Lewis took photographs of these hands, and then uh, master printer Ashley Taylor uh, turned them into two tone, half tone. Mm -hmm. um, files that we then laser cut. So screen printed background, then the wood cut hands, and then there's a hand applied gold leaf on the rings, mm -hmm. and then little Zwarski crystals on each of the, um, of the rings. Nice. Yeah, it was interesting actually, actually Ashley brought in her class this morning and said that to do the gold leaf, you did have to do it by hand, just like you said, but she screen printed the glue, which I thought was really, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then we actually have a sculptural piece, which is an addition print piece as well, right? Which is really challenging some notions of what printmaking can be, right? Yeah, so this isn't, this isn't a printed edition, but right. it's, a, it's an edition, it's an meaning addition. there are other copies of this that are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I think this is an edition of four or something. Mm -hmm. But it's bronze and um, master sculptor Harry Messersmith did all the cast bronzing, all the bronze casting on this one. Nice, it's beautiful. So this is a, uh, a series of prints by Carmen Colangelo. Mm -hmm. And it, this is a great example of sort of a, uh, a project that started one place and ended up in another place. So um, when we invited Carmen, it was for seven days and he wanted some kind of structure to the seven days. So he's like, well, how about it be, uh, you know, sort of notions of my being in Orlando, I'll do one image per day. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's where it started. And then um, he was very interested in the idea of books and bookmaking. And so the original idea is that we would do some kind of big folded piece. It was sort of like a, like a big wall map, something mm. that could be unfolded and become like this big tapestry, sort of, would be all put together. So because that was the idea, it need, each page needed to be both sides because we, we weren't sure how it was going to fold up. 
Um, so we started on it, and then as he started to learn a little bit more about Orlando, he kind of included bits of all that in these pieces. So the project is called Olando, which is like, you know, kind of like Ahoy Land. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, you know, he's just such an inventive artist. Um, so I don't know if you know this, Shannon, but Jack Kerouac lived for a while in Orlando. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, he wrote um, Dharma Bums oh. in Orlando. Wow. In College Park, and not very far from our studios at. And um, so, you know, there's some stuff okay. about Jack Kerouac and nice. uh, Allen Ginsberg and some of these. And there's, um, this is this little, this little piece and this come from a kind of aerial map of Orlando. So, mm -hmm. you know, okay, one well. of these is I-4. <laughs> yeah. um, and mm -hmm. then, you know, some of the baseball spring mm. training stuff that happens found its way in nice. um, but they're really rich uh, visually really rich mm. it's really great that they're on either side and you can even see traces of what's on the other side right. on the front of these which is right really right exciting. so there's seven seven images and each one is mm. yeah you you're displaying one you know the the verso and the recto right. of each one. Mm -hmm. So these are by Alex Dodge. Um, and he's an artist who spends his time between New York and Tokyo. He's an interesting artist, uh, kind of a scientist artist, mm -hmm. um, has a degree from MIT, um, and is really interested in sort of the algorithms of building these images. Um, and these are done on our that hydraulic press that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. So they are screen printed, all the color, is screen printed on aluminum, so we use this really awful epoxy ink. Mm -hmm. Screen print the image, and then we had a kind of a uh, a die, mm -hmm. like a mold, cut, mm -hmm. and we put the piece of aluminum in that die, and then mm -hmm. use that hydraulic press to push it that down. Impression. Into it. So if you get up, you know, you can see how. It's really kind of embossed all that mm -hmm. aluminum. Here's an example of an artist who has been to Flying Horse multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, this is Jiha Moon. She's a Korean born uh, painter, printmaker, and ceramic artist. And she did this print in 2008 with um, Ryan Book Burkhart and Larry. Cooper, and uh, it was right after this print that I took over Flying Horse, but Ryan and Larry worked with Jiha on this, but I got to sort of uh, work with Jiha after the fact, after the printing was done, and, and then in 2019, mm -hmm. we invited her back. So, you know, there's eight year mm -hmm. difference between this image and this image. But she, you know, she is really uh, playing with you know, uh, iconic images from her Korean culture and her American culture, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the vase and um, sort of this, so there's the Korean, the dragon, mm -hmm. and the vase, but then this is a direct lift from Roy Richtenstein's right. brush stroke piece, mm -hmm. right? It's also sort of the, the piece is called uh, Genie, mm -hmm. right? So this Roy Richtenstein brush work works as kind of vapor from mm -hmm. Genie vapor, right? Um, and then, you know, there's the Warhol mm -hmm. bananas. And, you know, it, it's, it's, right. it's, she's still dealing with the same Definitely. ideas and, and content yeah. eight years later. This print is a really great example of a print that started out one place and ended up in a very different place. So this is an artist, uh, Mark Fox. Um, uh, and we invited him to come down and make some lithographs. Mm -hmm. so we're standing around this big table just talking about what we're going to do during the week. 
and he's feeling the topic. Too. <laughs> like, this is so cool. This is like, I wonder if you could rub ink into all these grooves and print it. What that would look like? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, yeah. You know, we're just throwing out ideas of what we might do. So we had originally started talking about the lithographs. So that's what we started on. And he spent a week, almost almost a week, working on multiple stones and multiple plates for this litho. And it was it was going, but you know, we weren't gonna finish in that week, we could tell. And and he was he said, Well, you know that tabletop, can we can we just print it and see what it looks like? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we tore off the top of the table <laughs> and inked it up like we would a dry point, right? Sure. So a dry point is like an etching where you just draw straight into the plate without any acid. Right. Right? It's just the pressure of the needle scratching the surface of that plate. So we uh, printed it and it looked just like a dry point. Yeah. Um, and then his work is, is often text-based. So he was like, well, let's, you know, if we were to um, print it in two colors, there is the script that he, you know, he, he drew it out and then we had a big die, which is like a cookie cutter mm -hmm. made. And we printed it in the two colors, the green and the blue, uh, two different sections of this cutting board slash plate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we stack them, cut through both, mm. right? And mm -hmm. then take out the letters from one and the negative piece of the other and place them, place them in together. Uh, Ashley Taylor worked on this for a long time. All right. Well, thank you so much, Theo, for coming and giving us the tour. And again, for loaning the work. We're really excited to showcase the work that's been made over these last incredible 30 years. Thank you, Shannon. And we hope everybody can come and visit the exhibition. It's on view until February 3rd. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 to 5. You can also visit the exhibition online on our website. And we hope to see you soon.